<clears throat> Praise God, how you doing? Praise the Lord, how you doing? I'm Pastor Bird. <clears throat> and uh Praise God. Praise God. How you doing? How you doing today? I'm Pastor Bird of Lord of Harvest Christian Fellowship. And today I'm coming to share with you in the Bible, Bible class of um, our friend uh, Joseph. Back in Genesis chapter 37, we're going to start, and we're just going to talk about attitudes. We're going to talk about um, how we view things, how we look at things, and how um, our attitude uh, uh, kind of dictates how we do things. Um, first of all, let me start with some prayer and let's just ask God and the Holy Spirit to come into the meeting. I praise God for you out there today. I, I, I really hope and I pray that you all are doing well and that everything is all right uh, with your families and uh, that you're staying um, COVID virus free. So let's just pray. Let's just get right into it. And let's just pray. Um, I thank God for you and your families. I thank God for you being here today. And I just pray that um, all is well um, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just thank you. I praise you for today. I ask you that you will be with us. That this uh, Bible study will be a blessing to others. People may be able to grow from it. People may be able to glean from it. And that they, they can just take something today and and give their, their outlook a better, um, give it a clearer picture. And um, to just begin to respond to the things that the Holy Spirit and that you want to do in our lives, Lord God. Because sometimes our attitudes can really get in the way and um you know that's that's just human just just being human our attitude so we pray today father use me bless me help um people to understand that be careful of the way your attitude is the way you're looking at things and how you view things because it really can slow up what god wants to do in your life so father god Praise you. Use me today in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just thank God for Pastor Oz, Pastor Jan. I want to thank them for allowing me a chance to bring forth the word again. I want to thank my brothers and sisters that's out there in, um, in, uh, in sharing the word and, 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 and viewing in today, this morning. Just thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I love you. You know, I can't wait to hug you again. Um, you know, we don't get to love on each other, but I can love on you through this study. And I just want to say I love you. Praise God for you. And that you, that you have a blessed day, okay? All right, let's get started. Let's start over in Genesis chapter 37. We're going to start in, in, in verse 1. We're going to read down a little bit. And uh, we're going to just discuss um, some things about Joseph's life and about how his attitude. It, it wasn't just Joseph. Let me, give you, let me give you a little rundown here. It wasn't just Joseph's attitude. It was his father's attitude. It was his brother's attitude. He had 17 brothers or 16 brothers. And 
Can you imagine how much attitude that is? Come on now. Especially, especially you sisters out there. Come on. I know you know about attitude. I, I know you know about attitude. Because every little thing, your head will get to moving. Your finger get to moving. See what I'm saying? It's attitude. It's just something that's part of us. And um, we want to be careful how we respond as Christians because it can really delay blessings. It can really delay um, what God wants to do with us. Amen. So um, this is not just for the sisters because brothers got attitudes too. You know, I used to have one bad. I used to have it really bad. I didn't care about nothing. And God, I <laughs> thank God. I really thank God for caring enough for changing me, man. I didn't care about nothing, man. And the way people drive, the way people drive in Detroit, <laughs> it's, man, you just, you develop an attitude after so long. And I thank God for delivering, for deliverance, man, and delivering me from all of that, from all of that craziness out here, man, and, and, and not allowing myself to display Christ like Christ like characteristics having an attitude especially a negative attitude is not Christ like at all not so let's 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 go into the word let's go into the word all right I'm gonna start in verse one <clears throat> now it said and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob, Joseph being 17. Joseph was 17 years old. His story, Joseph is the main character, but there's some other characters that's in here too that sets this story up. But this Joseph story can be any one of us, any one of us, we can look back and say, man, that sound like what was going on in my family. Because we all have family members, and they don't all respect us, and they don't all look out for us, and they don't all want to see the best happen for us. But just listen to this. Let's see what we can grab side of this, and let's see what we can take home to apply to ourselves. Amen. Okay, it says, <clears throat> let's go to uh, finish two, finish verse two. Being 17 years old, Joseph was feeding, was feeding the flock with his brother. <clears throat> and the lad was with the sons of Bilhal and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, how do you start off? This young kid was something, man. He was 17. So we got to understand, you know he was a smart aleck. You know, tell me what 17 ain't a smart aleck. You show me a 17-year-old that ain't a smart aleck or it don't have attitude, man, and I'll show you uh, the moon. I'll show you. I'll show you the moon. I'm making it comical because it's really funny. At 17, we are still developing. We're still growing. And God is using us to, um, at the time, he's using us as a young adult. He's using things to show us and to teach us just how um, life really works. And Joseph is still learning. He got 16 brothers, man. I can imagine. It's got to be tough being the, the younger brother, you know. And some of us were the younger or some of us was in the middle. And it's just tough, man, when you have that many brothers and sisters. But the grace of God is on his life. And God is going to use that thing, that, um, uh, that attitude that Joseph has, and it's going to Take him right to greatness in the end. See, 
So let me just share with you. Um, let me just share with you what is going on. Hold on, y'all. Let me just share with you. All right. My plug came, came unplugged. I'm sorry. <clears throat> let me just share with you kind of what Joseph went through. And let me show you where these, where these positions of attitude comes in at. Amen. First thing is right here. In the bottom of verse 2, it says, And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. <laughs> Man, the one thing older brothers and sisters don't want is the younger brother and sister telling on them. Come on, y'all. Talk to me now. Talk to me. I know it's many. <laughs> I know it's many of you that's been through this. You don't want the brother or the younger sister telling on you. Ma, I saw him smoking. Ma, I saw him have a drink. Ma, they was cussing. Ma, they was this. Whatever it is, because you know, at 17, you still trying to find yourself. You still trying to, you don't want to be looked at that, that square. They go to church. They just square, and you want to be cool, and you want to fit in. And what do you do at 17? You experiment. You try things. Every time Joseph seen them do something, he told the father on them. This is funny to me. It's funny to me because I went through it. I had a younger brother that told everything I did. It didn't matter. Everything I did. And uh, I didn't understand it at the time. I can see, I can look back and see it now, but Joseph was the same way. Joseph told everything. So let's read on and see what else happened. But remember, it's attitude. That's an attitude. Let me, let me break down the definition of attitude real quick, and you will see what I'm talking about here with Joseph, with why he wanted to tell. He just was a snitch. But not necessarily a snitch, but I'm making it comical a little bit. But he, he was, he, that's what his brothers looked at him as. Like, man, we don't want him to be around us. He just the, 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 the goody two-shoe uh, snitch guy, and we don't want him around us. So go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and get your laugh out. We're going to get a little serious, but let me share with you this, this definition. It says, it's a noun. The position or posture assumed by the body in connection with action, feeling, mood, etc. That's one. And then the other one says, a manner of acting, feeling, or thinking that shows one's disposition or opinions. Man, you, you now. I know you can see that in him telling. His disposition was, Dad, this is what they're doing. Dad, I saw this. Dad, I saw I saw that. Dad, they ran me off. Dad, they threw rocks at me. Dad, they didn't want me around. Why? Because he was just a young kid and he didn't understand about relationships. Relationships have to be honored, brother, sister, whatever, that you don't you don't tell on each other. And Joseph just didn't he didn't get it. He thought he was the number one kid. The he 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 had a, this attitude to where he felt he was better, or his relationship with the dad was better. But let's read on down. I think it it kind of sums up the story uh, a little bit better. Amen? Now watch this in verse 3. Oh, I see, I see the problem now. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. 
Now that can start an attitude. That's this is I can see the brothers having an attitude now. It ain't just Joseph. It says the dad loved Joseph more. Man, that's that's a quick way. Everybody in the house have an attitude when you show favoritism towards one kid. I got man, I have four at any time to be over here with me. And I I God is man. God my witness, I praise God Almighty for showing me how to love all of them. all of my kids are different. Each one of them. They're different. And I praise God for showing me how to love them, man, because I I was on my face. I was on my face. God, how am I going to raise these four kids, man, without, without, you know, without a wife being here or their mother being right here? And God said, man, I'll show you. You take your time. I'll show you how to do it. And I follow God and I, I praise God Almighty. I followed the Holy Spirit's um, teachings and promptings and correction about doing things and not doing things. And it worked. And I never, never, not even one of my children said, man, you, 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 first Rio and Zion's like, yeah, you love uh, Mike and them. Uh, you, you know, you didn't do that to us. You, you, you whooped us. Yeah, Rio, I think. Rio got one whooping and Zani got two. And they 18 years old now. Come on. What kind? <laughs> one, Rio one and I Zani two. You know, and they were some, oh man, you treated us, you treated us different. They wouldn't, why are you letting them get away with that? But God showed me how, what kind of attitude to have towards each child. So that, so that he could get the glory out of it. So that they could see God working through me towards them. And I, my children tell me all the time, man, it's a blessing that we love you. We, we, we just love our relationship with you. And because I did not know. I see here, Joseph, uh, you know, Israel is starting things off. A little rough because he's starting to favor Joseph. And now the brothers, that's one attitude. The dad is favoring him. He loved him more. And now the brothers are starting to see it. And now they're getting the attitude. So now you got the dad. You got Joseph with an attitude. The dad with an attitude. And the brothers with an attitude. So let's keep reading. <clears throat> So watch this. He said in verse 3, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. I can, I can understand that. I can understand it. I can really understand it. He was the son of his old age. So he loved him and he knew he wasn't going to have any more kids or what he thought. And um, he, just, he just loved him. And, 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 and you know what? Zeta's my youngest. And I, I love her, but I don't love her any more than the others. But I do love her because she's the youngest. And, yeah, it's, that protection kicks in. And, and I cover her. You know, and I make sure that she's being treated fairly. And she's being hugged and kissed and encouraged. Amen? You know, and so, you know, we, we, we have to make sure. Even as our children get older, that we still encourage and we still love on them, and we still share with them, and we 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 we, we share in our opinions um, and in our attitude positive things toward them, Amen. So that they can see the Spirit, the Holy Spirit working through us towards them, they can see God working in in our lives, Amen. That's key right there is. Having an attitude to allow God to use you in a mighty way. Amen. So let's read. Let's read on down. It says, He was the he was he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. Okay, 
Now, I don't know if he made anything for the other brothers, but I think this coat is going to make it even worse. First of all, he loves him more. He probably be, hey, son, come here, give me a hug, tickling him, playing with him when he was younger. He, he probably sheltered him. Hey, stop doing that to him. And the other brothers, you know, they, they just developed the attitude of, you know, yeah, we don't like him. We don't want him around. Look how he treat him. Now he's got a coat of many colors to distinguish him from everybody else. Why he didn't do that for me, you know how we get. You know how we are. Amen? Within our family, uh, our families, you know, well, hey, she got a new, she got a new, she got that new Lincoln truck. So I don't know who she thinks she is. I'm the one. I'm the one that's saved. I'm the one that's doing God's will. I'm the one. Oh, y'all, come on now. Let's talk, talk to me. I, I can feel it. I can feel it oozing through the computer lines. Oh, Facebook. I can feel it oozing. I know it's an I, it's been some attitudes yesterday. Come on. This is confession time. Somebody saw something or did something or said something. That's just how we are. We're human. I'm not saying everybody. But I'm just saying that's how we are sometimes. That's just our, our own human selfishness. But we have to just, we have to watch those little, those little, attitudes, those little things in us that causes us to be that way. Amen? So, he made him a coat of many colors. Verse 4. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, brethren, they hated him and could not <laughs> speak peaceable one to him. Man, these guys, it then went from one level to another level. And people, God gave me this, God gave me this word um, about three or four weeks ago. And he said, I want you to speak on attitude. He said, because some people's attitudes is stopping what I want to do for you. Oh man, God, it, 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 man, it's, it's, we, we just got to watch our opinions. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to it. Let me go back to the definition so we can, we can keep it straight. We got to watch. Watch what it says. It says, our manner of acting, feeling, or thinking that shows one's disposition an opinion, etc. And, and, and the example it gives, it says, a friendly attitude. A friendly attitude. I know, I mean, I know we get tired of different things that happen on the job, you know, maybe that our kids do or something in the family, but we have to be careful. As Christians, we have to really be careful as Christians, how we respond to others and the love that we show towards others and our attitude towards others. But see, this right here is starting to get a little out of hand because when you got 16 other brothers and it says in four, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him. That's a strong word hate this thing is escalating man it ain't going to where joseph we don't want you around because <coughs> we know you're gonna snitch us out now they hate him this is we have to be careful remember i said it's it start out little and the next thing you know you you Things will start to happen. You have an argument. You have a disagreement about something, man. And the next thing you know, now is some hate getting in there. That's the enemy. That's the devil. That's him at his. That's the enemy at his. That's his daily. His daily chore is to get you to dislike someone. To get you 
to hate somebody, to get you to start talking about somebody. That's his number one thing, is to bring division. Remember that. Remember, in your attitudes, as you go daily, just remember. That's what the enemy does. And sometimes people deserve, sometimes people deserve it. Hey, man, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I try to tell it the truth and keep it across the table. Sometimes people deserve it, man. You be in a store, and they, they be in a store, man, and they had this basket full of stuff. And they get up to the register, man, and they tell me, I want to pay for this over here. I want to pay for this. And you've already been in the line for about 45 minutes, man. That's hard. It's hard to come. Come on, y'all. Talk to me today. It's hard to keep yourself. It is. I'll be like, Lord Jesus, if you don't help this lady get out of this line, I got to go. I just wanted to run in, get some stuff for dinner, and run out. And now I'm in this line. And, oh, man. One time, it was a lady. She had two baskets. She had two full baskets, man. And, yeah, God got the best of me. He got the best of me. But I got to just tell you the truth. My attitude. And this is probably six or seven maybe eight years ago but man he been he been really working on me and i'm sharing it with you today man we it's the little stuff like that and we really have to be careful about so let's move on let's let's keep it going watch what it says it says in the, in the lower part of verse four the latter part of four it says they hated him and could not speak peaceable unto him what is that i gotta use that though Speak peaceable, <laughs> y'all. You gotta speak peaceable, man. You gotta be kind. You gotta be loving. You can't let your attitude take over. Okay, Amen. He said they could not speak. That is, that's your brother. Your brother. They could not speak peaceably unto him. That means every time they talk to him. It had they had an attitude. They were mad. They were angry. They were angry. The one thing that I thank God for with me is that I get over stuff quick. I don't I don't I don't hold it. You know, I used to. But God delivered me and I thank God for that. He 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 don't let me he'll tell me, Bert, you gotta let that go. You gotta stop. No. Pray about it, let it go. Forgive them, overlook it. It, it, it. You have to stop and let it go because the enemy wants to use uh, hatred, um, um, uh, uh, unpeaceable uh, relationships with people. He wants to build that thing up as big as he can to, to, to take away the love. And to tear down the relationship part. Amen. So be careful there. All right, let's keep going. It said in verse five. Now we got all of that out of four. Let's let's see what, what happens next. And Joseph dream and Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. This thing is just getting better. Now he, he had a dream, and he walking around telling his dream, man. And he telling me that he probably he probably building up the part in the dream where where he's where Joseph is is doing things. Joseph probably is building himself up over the brothers, and I can imagine that being irritating. I'm talking about offensive, irritating. Crazy, you know. So let's see what else happened. Man, they said, and they hated him yet the more. Listen to the words. Yet they hated him yet, yet they hated him. And then it said they hated him yet the more. What in the world is that? We we have to really be conscious. Of what we're doing and how we're doing it. 
I know it's probably not a lot of um, brothers and sisters out there that are dealing with it to this extent. I pray it is not in the name of Jesus. I pray it is not, but I know in certain families, man, it can be, it can really be tough with brothers and sisters and aunties and uncles, especially if the family is big like this one. It's crazy, you know, because everybody got a different way of looking at things, their attitude for things. Uh, all right. Six, verse six. And he said unto them, I mean, if you're coming in late, I'm sorry, I'm in Genesis chapter 37, verse six. Let me repeat that. Genesis chapter 37, verse six. We're, 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 we're reflecting on the life of Joseph. And, and, and Israel and his brothers um, before he when he was a young lad when he was like 17 he was a young adult amen okay six and he said unto them here I pray ye this dream which I have dreamed and behold we were binding sleep sheaves in the field and lo my sheave arose and also stood upright and behold your sheave stood around and made obesity obedience to my sheep <clears throat> and his brother said to him shalt thou indeed reign over us or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us and they hated him yet the more for his dreams and his words. This thing is carrying on. It is, it's, it's, it's now the enemy is in there. See, and that's what we don't want. We don't want to give place to the enemy. Okay, let's keep reading. And they hated him the more for his dreams and his words. Now it seems like Joseph is rubbing in their face. First, Joseph is the love son. And then now, Joseph got a gift. They do see something a little special about him. He's loved. He's given a coat of many colors. He spends more time with the dad. And now he's got a gift. Woo-hoo! That's, that's a lot. That's a lot for the younger child to have when you have so many brothers. Let's keep reading. Verse 9. It, it was, he said, and he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon <clears throat> and the eleven stars made op, op, op. Man, obsidians to me. And he told it to his father and to his brother. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that, that, that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brothers indeed Come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. And his brother envied him before his father observed the same. Now it went from, it went, they hate him and they envy him. Let's get on a serious note. We have to check ourselves as Christians. We have to check ourselves. The Holy Spirit is there to help us get those little foxes out of our hearts, man. Those little things that can start to build up and they can build into something big. Something that can really, really take us years to get rid of. Amen. Amen. And I, I, I really want to just say, in, in the name of Jesus, God, deliver us. Help us 
from our attitudes and things that can grow in our heart that the enemy chooses and, and, and that he he longs to get a hold of to to bring division and to to, to, to to tear down the family structure even the more. Father God, just, just help us understand your word and why your word is so important to us. It's these little things like this that the enemy really wants to get in. And he don't care how he gets in, y'all. Listen to me. The, the, the enemy, the devil, comes to bring division to kill to destroy that's his job it's not anything nice he wants to steal relationships marriages relationships between father and son he wants to steal those he wants to steal relationships between mother and daughter. He wants to steal it. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying, be careful. Because all is not, it's not always well in our family structure. But it can be if we take the proper position, we have to take the proper position um, in our attitude to help change things. Because let me tell you something, God wants to change us. He wants to give us the attitude of love and peace and joy. He wants to give us those fruits that will display and that we can share with others. Because love is contagious. Love is contagious. Amen. And all it takes is just to start to show a little bit of love to those family members or to those people on the job or to wherever the division and the strife is coming in at. And your attitude flares up the most. At. Amen. Just, just, let's just try it. Just for those that know that this is what they're dealing with. God wants to hear you. But let's keep going. I'm almost finished. I'm wrapping it up. It says in verse 11, And the brother envied him, and the brother envied him, but his father observed the same. His father paid attention to what he was he was saying, because now his father is starting to understand there's something here. He's connecting the dots with Joseph. And his brethren went to feed the father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not <clears throat> thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, come, and I will send thee unto them and he said to him, Here I am. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brothers and well with the flocks, and bring me and, 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 and bring me word again. So he sent him out to the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. <clears throat> Now, he knew he could depend on Joseph to bring the report back, good or bad, what was going on. But I, I don't really don't think he, he saw in the spirit what was about to transpire. Let's keep reading down. <clears throat> 15, and a certain man found him and, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seek is thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, <clears throat> where they feed their flocks. And the man said, 
They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to kill him. Wow. See how that, how that, it, it, it was just, it was a little dislike, just an attitude. It was just a little attitude over here first. They were just looking at Joseph. Ah, oh, yeah, brother, now gone. Now they, now, now they hate him. Now they, now they want him to come near. They didn't want him around. Now they want him to come near to, 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 to grab him and capture him and kill him. That's the enemy, people. Attitude. Not all attitudes in in this in this way, but man, attitude. So watch this. <clears throat> Nineteen, and they said one to another, "Behold, this dreamer coming." Wow, that's. They didn't even, they didn't even say, man, our brother Joseph coming. They said the dreamer, man. Listen, what? This, these, these brothers was, these was some alcohol brothers, man. They, they didn't even say his name. They said the dreamer. <laughs> God. Woo, Lord, help me. Help me here, Lord. Help me. <laughs> Woo, God. Ooh, thank you. Verse 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast have devoured him. And we shall see what, what will become of his dreams. Then Reuben heard it. And delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Well, come on, man. They don't, they don't, why, why should we kill him? And Reuben said unto them, I'm in verse 22. Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might, that he might rid him out of their hands and deliver him into his father again. <clears throat> Watch this. And he came, they just trying to teach him a lesson. Reuben is basically saying, let's just teach him a lesson. Let's throw him in a pit and let's leave him down in there. And, you know, and then he'll be returned to his dad and he'll see that he needs to appreciate us more than he needs to talk about us and use, his, use the dreams against us. So watch this. 23. And, and it came to pass when Joseph was come into his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. Now remember, he's 17, so he probably was a pretty... Pretty nice sized kid. He wasn't a baby. He, he was a pretty nice sized kid. And they put. They lower. And they cast him into the pit. And. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat. Down to eat. Bread. And they lifted up their eyes. And looked and behold. A company of. Ishmaelites came from from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. 26. And Judah said unto his brother, What profit what profit if, if we slay our brother uh, and conceal his blood? Now they're thinking about it. They're trying to figure out, hey man, this is, you know, so let me wrap this up. I got a couple minutes. 
He said, come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and, <clears throat> and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content. So they did not kill him, but they thought about it. And that man, that attitude, woo, it shot that thing up. This happened over a period. This didn't happen over a week, you know, or nothing like that. It happened over a period of time, and the enemy kind of got in there. And then they passed the uh, a Midianites merchant men, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit to to the Ishmaelites. And then, no, hold on, I'm sorry, out of the pit and. And sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph to Egypt. And Reuben returned to the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And now this is where it, 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 it starts to uh, get anguishing for them. Because Reuben was the oldest. He knew better. He knew better. And now, this story starts to change. But I just want to say, remember, attitude. As I bring this thing to a close, y'all, attitude, man, can, can really mess some things up in our lives. We have to make sure, man, that we um, ask God for help, for love, I didn't always, I didn't always, um, man, I kind of, man, I feel the Holy Spirit tugging on my heart, you know, I wasn't always, you know, I was a, I was a kind of a terrible guy, um, in my younger years, because I, I just grew up in a, a terrible part of Detroit, and, and I seen people get hurt, seeing people lose um, homes and lose cars and um, just a lot of um, misfortune. And uh, my mother went through two divorces and um, I, I didn't have a father. I, 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 my real father never was had I uh, spent one time with my real father and then my stepfather, um, we we just didn't see eye to eye, man. He, he didn't, you know, he didn't take to me and I didn't take to him. And um, um, it, 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 it caused some attitudes. It caused me to have an attitude. And I'm sharing this because I've been through it and God has delivered me. And I thank God so much. I, I really do. That's I, I understand why he wanted to use this message today. But I just want to say to you as I close. Examine yourself. I'm always going through self-examination. Examine yourself. Examine your heart. Examine The way you look at things, the way you view things, your opinions on things. And make sure it's according to the way the Holy Spirit wants you to be. <clears throat> because things don't always go right every day. They don't just... and and. One little thing happened, and that attitude can be carried on all day long. And so, as I close, I just pray, and I just ask you to, to um, let God um, touch your heart. As I begin to pray us out, let God touch your heart. And uh, let him begin to heal those areas um, um, 
let him begin to heal and touch those areas uh, that that are hurt. And I pray that God will be able to get in those areas and that you will open up and that he can heal you and that he can show you where your attitude about your boss, oh my God, your attitude, woo, your neighbor. Man, you know, neighbors can be something. <laughs> your neighbor, your neighbor that got that fence that he acting like it, oh, I don't even want to go into it. Father God, let me just pray. Father God, I pray out this Bible study. I thank you and I praise you for everybody that, that watched it, everybody that got something out of it. And Father God, uh, allow this word to penetrate them and to help them down the line so that they can see their attitudes are it's, 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 it's something that we want to be able to make sure that it's positive on a daily basis. And we want to allow you to use us to help others. We thank you, God, and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day, y'all. Bless you.